Welcome to revisionug.com, the e-learning platform that provides learning in its simplicity. For more information, please contact us using the links below. In this lesson, we are going to look at the muscular skeletal system and it is our lesson number one. But before we get started, we are going to look at the new words that we are going to meet there. The first word here is reading as cranium. This word is cranium. It is the skull. We have this word humerus, skeleton, ligament, patella, clavicle, suture, scapula, sesamoid. We read together sesamoid, scapula, suture, clavicle, patella, ligament, skeleton, humerus, and cranium. Wow. So those are the words we are going to meet in this uh, lesson. So let us get started. So when you look at the muscular skeletal system, it's made up of two systems. One is the system of muscles making up the muscular, and another one is the system of bones making it to be skeletal. Therefore, the word system means the group of organs uh, that work together to perform a similar function therefore you are having a system of muscles and a system of the skeleton therefore we are going to start with the skeletal system then from the word skeletal we are getting the word skeleton the word is skeleton then let us understand what does the word skeleton mean remember different structures different organisms have different structures uh, that support their bodies i repeat different organisms have different structures that provide their bodies with support for example the cuticle can also be structure providing support we are having bones then others have fruits under a pressure there are for these three different structures that provide support to these living organisms they make up what we call the skeleton on uh, therefore, the word skeleton simply means the structure that supports the body of an organism. The skeleton is a structure that supports the body of any organism. Therefore, we are going to look at the types of skeleton, and these ones are three in number. One, we are going to have what we call an exoskeleton. Then two, there is what we call an endoskeleton. And three, there is what we call the hydrostatic skeleton. I'm repeating, my dear Lana. The, one, the first one is exo, the another one is endo, the another one is hydrostatic skeleton. As I've told you earlier, different organisms have different structures that support their bodies. Then, let us get to understand what does this exoskeleton mean. Remember we've said a skeleton is a structure that supports the body or that provides the, the body with a support or it is a supportive structure of an organism. Then, what is an exoskeleton? So, an exoskeleton is a type of skeleton found outside the body of an organism. So this type of skeleton is found outside the body of any organism. That is an exoskeleton. And this exoskeleton is made up of what we call the cuticles. Yes, the cuticles. Then others are made up of what we call the chitin. The chitin or the chitin. Then others are made up of what we call keratin. For example, uh, when you look at uh, um, our fingernails, this is an exoskeleton. When you look at the fingernails, when you look at the horns of animals, when you look at hooves, all those ones are external structures and they provide support to those organisms. But majorly, exoskeleton is found in almost all invertebrates. Remember, we said an invertebrate is an organism without a backbone. Then the invertebrates that have exoskeleton, we are having the class of arthropods. The class of what? Arthropods. Then under arthropods, uh, we said they have jointed legs, segmented bodies. Then under arthropods, we are having what we call the myriapods. Then apart from myriapods, we have also what we call insects. Then under insects, apart from insects, sorry, we have also what to call the crustaceans the crustaceans here then when you look at the myriapods an example is a milped therefore myriapods or milpeds and centipeds they have an exoskeleton 
all insects like sister flies, house flies, grasshoppers, cockroaches, all of those ones, they have an exoskeleton. When we come to the crustaceans, and the crustaceans here we have an example of a crab, an example of a lobster, an example of a shrimp, a talk of the wood lice, and so on. So all those ones, they are having an exoskeleton. Then we also have what we call arachids. Then arachids, these ones, they are anthropods with the two main body um, divisions and eight legs or four pairs of legs. Take an example of a spider. We can take um, a tick, then a mite, and da da da. And the mites and also the scorpions. So all those ones, they are anthropods and they have an exoskeleton. And their exoskeleton is made up of a carbohydrate called the chitin or the chitin. This one's chitin, or you can read that, read this one as the chitin. They're of my dear Lana. And exoskeleton simply means the type of skeleton or the supportive structure which is found outside the body of any organism. But remember, before I continue, down the video video we are having the knots after listening to the video please go through the knots they are well organized then let us now take an, uh, um, another type of skeleton and this is what we call an endoskeleton so an endoskeleton endo means inside therefore an endoskeleton is a type of skeleton uh, which is found inside the body of any organism and this endoskeleton is a characteristic of bones so those organisms that have endoskeletons, they have bones and also cartilages. Therefore, the examples of all those organisms that have endoskeleton are all what we call vertebrates. They are vertebrates. Remember, uh, we said vertebrates are the organisms that do have and the backbones now for example we are having a class of vertebrates called mammals then under mammals you can take the human beings you can take an example of a gorilla we have a pig there is the kangaroo we have monkeys we have buffaloes we have donkeys and so many so those ones they're all mammals and they have um bones and the bones are found inside therefore they are having what to call an endoskeleton then apart from the class of mammals we have the class of reptiles so the animals that move by clawing for example the crocodiles the tortoises we have the turtles we have the tilapins we have the snakes so all those ones they have an endoskeleton so when you look at this this is what we mean by an endoskeleton so this is these are the bones and the bones are found inside the body of a living organism apart from reptiles we have also another class and this class is of the amphibians so amphibians like frogs toads hyla and newts salamanders all of them they have in endoskeleton then again we also have the class of birds birds like the hens the cocks the losters all those ones they have other bones and the bones are found inside the body and these bones are accompanied by the cartilages therefore uh, vertebrates all vertebrates they have an endoskeleton like mammals reptiles total i mean amphibians and the birds then when we come to the last type this is what we called the hydrostatic this one is read as hydrostatic skeleton therefore a hydrostatic skeleton is a type of skeleton found inside the body no is the type of skeleton sorry a found in the body of an organism where uh, it is having the cavity and that cavity is called the silom and this silom is filled with the uh, fruits and these fruits are under a uh, pressure so in simple terms hydrostatic skeleton is the type of skeleton found in the bodies of organisms uh, or found in organisms whose bodies are filled with the fruits and these fruits are under pressure i do repeat a hydrostatic skeleton is the type of skeleton found inside the body of an organism uh, filled with fruits and these fruits they are under pressure and now the best example is what you are seeing here this is an earthworm so all earthworms they have what you call the hydrostatic skeleton inside their bodies they are filled with fruits and the fruits are under pressure then when you look at this one uh, this is what you call a jellyfish so even if even 
uh, this jellyfish has hydrostatic skeleton now when you go to the classes of invertebrates that have hydrostatic skeleton one we can take the class of mollusks and the mollusks here we mean snails slugs oyster um octopus uh, squids cuttlefish and so on then also we have the class of worms all worms have hydrostatic skeleton then when you look at also what we call the echinoderms then and also the sponges so all these ones have uh, a hydrostatic skeleton my dear Lana, are we still together so we have been discussing the types of skeleton we started by understanding what the term skeleton mean and we will say that a skeleton is a structure that supports the body of an organism two we have looked at the types of skeleton whereby we will say that there are three depending on the structures that are providing support the organism we have said we have the exoskeleton we have the endoskeleton we have the hydrostatic skeleton exoskeleton is found in invertebrates like the anthropods um, and the anthropods we have mariapods we have insects we have the crustaceans and again in the skeleton we've said it is found inside the body of an organism and we said it is also found in all vertebrates like mammals reptiles amphibians and the birds then the hydrostatic skeleton we've said is the type of skeleton are found in organisms whose bodies are filled with the pressure and as they are filled with the pressure so examples we have the mollusks like snails we have the worms like the earthworms hookworms tapeworms we have echinoderms and the sponges then what you should know uh, when you look at this one it is an exoskeleton now when you look at this insect it is growing now it has removed all it has shed off the old skeleton then it is now growing and this act of shedding of the old skeleton is what we call a cdesis is what we call a cdesis or is what we call molting therefore molting is the act of shedding an old exoskeleton by uh, these organisms like the arthropods and how important is molting so this molting is very important because it enables these insects to do what to grow so as you are seeing in this diagram so the insect is undergoing molting and molting is a biological change uh-huh so i think we are still uh, together over there so let us move on and look at what you call the human skeleton so in the previous lesson i mean in the previous uh, start we've looked at the types of skeleton and now here we are going to majorly uh, look at what we call an endoskeleton we remember we said an endoskeleton is the type of skeleton which is found inside the body of an organism remember we say that this endoskeleton is a characteristic or it is characterized characterized by the bones and also the cartilages as we are going to understand later on now and um in the Ex the best example of an endoskeleton is the human skeleton therefore once the question comes and they tell to define a human skeleton what are you going to write the answer is very simple then if it is a human skeleton we are going to, def to define this one as the framework of bones therefore a human skeleton is a framework of bones now i want you to understand the difference between a skeleton and a human skeleton a skeleton is just a structure providing support to an organism then a human skeleton is a framework of bones because it is made up of what we call the bones right now when you look at this human skeleton as you are seeing here it is made up of 206 bones mm. it is made up of 206 bones and in babies it's very funny so the babies have 300 bones why because their bones are still cartilaginous then as they keep on growing then these bones start to fuse together then they reduce it to 206 but what you have to know is that the babies have more bones than adults but for us the adults we have 260 uh, bones right aha uh -huh. then this human skeleton is divided into two one it is divided into two one it is divided into a region called appendicular the word is 
appendicular it is the appendicular then number two it is also divided into what we call the axial skeleton i'm repeating i will say that the human skeleton is a framework of bones it is made up of 206 bones then it is divided into two regions one is the appendicular region and another one is the axial skeleton or the axial region then uh, we are going to understand what we are talking about then then now let us look at let us start with the appendicular skeleton then appendicular skeleton is made up of two parts one it is made up of the limbs and also what we call the limb gaudos it is made up of the limbs and also the limb gaudos the limb galdos here now what do i mean by limbs limbs these are the legs when you look at all of this let me let me get here uh, clear mm -hmm. now when you look at all of the all of this these are the limbs the legs and also when you look at all of these this hand and this one so these are the limbs then the point of attachment onto this main scene onto this main skeleton this point of attachment and this point of attachment here then we have the point of attachment here and point of attachment here now those points of attachment are what we call the gaudos so the axis skeleton is made up of the limbs and the limb gaudos now the limbs these are the hands and the legs then the limb gaudos these are the points of attachment onto the main skeleton that is the appendicular skeleton then when you go to the um, axis skeleton then this axis skeleton it is the axis so we it is made up of the cranium then we have the vertebral column and also the rib cage here now this is the skull the skull the, the whole head is called the skull then we are having this middle part which is the uh, vertebral column the backbone and also the rib cage which means that when you look at um, uh, from our diagram here when you look at this uh, this is the rib cage so the rib cage it is under the axis skeleton then we are having the backbone this one the sternum and also we are having what we call the skull the all of this it is the skull but when you just take the upper part on this one becomes the cranium therefore my dear Lana, the human skeleton is divided into two regions one is the appendicular skeleton and another one is the axial skeleton then the axial skeleton is made up of uh, the skull here number one it is made up of the skull uh, another one, the rib cage and also the vertebral column or the back bone then the appendicular skeleton is made up of the gald this one is the limb gald and also this one is a limb gald and also the limbs limbs they are the hands and the legs are we still together there all right that's good of you let us keep moving now we are going to start by discussing what we call the axial skeleton yes we are going to discuss the axial skeleton fully and i'm going to start with the part which is called the vertebral column the part called the vertebral column now this vertebral column it is in form of a curve it has four curves when you look at it here let me change my color uh when you look at um, uh, this uh uh, this one here it has a curve it is curving it is bending it has this curve backwards then this curve in front then back and this one now it is not a straight thing it is bending then number two the vertebral column inside there it is protecting what we call the spinal cord so the spinal cord is being protected by the vertebral column and if you don't call this one a vertebral column you can call it the spine or you can call it uh, you can call it the back what the back bone now it is made up of bones if you look at this one this is a bone even this one is a bone even this one is a bone now these bones that make up a backbone are those bones we call them the vertebra when it is once the vertebra when they are very many we just add later it then becomes the vertebrae so the bones of a backbone we call them the vertebrae they we call them the vertebrae in plural when this one's called the vertebra and the backbone itself is called the spine or you can call it the backbone or you can call it the vertebral column uh -huh. 
her. Now, this backbone, apart from protecting the spinal cord, it also provides the region or the area or the surface area of attachment for the ribs. So, the ribs attach onto the backbone. Uh -huh, as we are going to see then this backbone is made up of bones and now these bones uh, are divided into regions and there are five regions now we have this this backbone in the neck so that neck region is what we call the cervical region now this cervical region in the neck region is made up of five vertebrae now from the cervical region we come to the chest region now that chest region where we have the chest cavity where we have the rib cage then that region is called the thoracic that is called the thoracic region now it is made up of 12 bones and now these ones are five bones mm -hmm. now from there we come to the abdomen abdominal region and that is called the lumbar it is called the lumbar region then from that one we have this one in the pelvis then that one's called the sacro and that is called the sacro region and the sacro region is made up of are also five bones then we have now how many regions are those the clavicle there are five bones the thoracic there are also 12 bones now the lumbar is made up of five bones then the sacral is made up of five bones but these five bones they fused to make one piece and again we have the last one which is called the codo and this codo is made up of four bones and these four bones fused to form one bone and this is the sacral and this last bone here is what we call the coxs. It is called the coxs. That one where which makes the um uh, making an opening with the anus. So that one is what we call the coxs. So uh, this region here is the 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 coldo. Now this region here is the sacro. Then this region here it is the lumbar. Then here we have the thoracic. Then this one is the clavicle. Therefore, if we try to add the bones of the back the bones of a backbone we have the five from the cervical then we have five from i mean 12 from the clavicle how many are those ones those ones are 17 now we have the five from lumbar now this is 22 right seven plus two that is 12 then 22 then again we have the five the five from sacro those ones are 27 and also four from the loom the cold now this is seven in one uh -huh. so there are 31 pieces of bones that are found within the back what the backbone remember we said the skeleton the human skeleton is made up of 206 bones then uh, the appendicular skeleton is making is making up or is made up of 126 bones then the axial region is made up of 80 bones but the backbone is having 31 bones are we still together right now my delana this one makes the end of our first lesson we meet in the next lesson but remember this is revision ug.com the only e-learning that provides learning in ec simplicity we meet in the next lesson but down there we have the notes read through them and do the assignment below